First, look through the microscope and adjust the focus to where you can see. After the microscope is adjusted, use the needle nose tweezers to pick up the front end of the probe. Press down on the probe holder so that the clip goes up. Insert the probe under the clip and make sure to position it so that the upper and left edges of the probe are touching the edges of the holder. I'm going to play the clip again, this time zoomed in. Really take notice of how the probe is right up against the left and top edges of the holder. Removing the probe is the opposite of inserting it. First, press down on the holder so that the clip raises, and then use the tweezers to grab the front end of the probe and gently pull it out. After it is out of the holder, return it to the gel box. Once your probe is installed, you are ready to set up the microscope. First, you want to look at the box next to the microscope and make sure that the illumination is on and the intensity is halfway up. The microscope should be at its highest position and the light should be focused on the sample stem. Once you have made sure all of this is correct, you may place your sample on the scanner using the tweezers. Once the sample is in place, you want to attach the optical head. You should come in from the back and make sure to clear the sample. Set it on the alignment pins. Hold on to the optical head with one hand and attach the spring on the other side with your other hand. And then do the same for the other side. Once both springs are attached, plug in the scanner to the back. Check the sample height by making sure the top of the sample is no higher than the alignment pins on either side. If it is, press up on the base until the sample height comes to at least the height of the alignment pins on both sides. Now you can install the probe. Make sure the contacts are on top, the tightening screw is loosened, and that all the levers on the inside are up. Tilt it to avoid hitting the sample and make sure it goes all the way to the back of the scanner and then release it. Let it fall onto the alignment pins. Reach around to the tightening screw and tighten the lever to a snug position so that it holds the probe. Now you are ready for alignment. If everything is set up correctly, a sum will appear on the display. If the laser is slightly in front of, above, or below the tip, you will not see a sum. If you see no sum, rotate the Y adjustment knob in the back first. Turn it about half a turn in each direction. If you still see no sum, move the X adjustment knob clockwise about a quarter of a turn, and then go back to the Y knob and do the half turns again. Repeat as necessary. As long as the sum drops off when you turn the Y knob, you know you are somewhere on the tip. If instead you see two sums in a single direction, you could be in between the legs of the probe. If this is the case, you want to move in between them. So you want to find the minimum sum between the two peaks, and then turn the X counterclockwise until a maximum sum appears. Then use the Y knob one more time to try to maximize the sum. As a rule of thumb, the sum should be well over 6 and relatively close to 7. Now the laser is at the end of the probe's tip. The final step is to align the photo detector. There are two knobs for this, the vertical adjustment and the horizontal adjustment. When you do this, you want to pay attention to the display. The goal is to get the boxes that say vertical and horizontal to be as close to zero as possible. They can be off by about two tenths, but no more. 
So first, turn the vertical knob until it is zero, and then turn the horizontal knob to try to get it to zero as well. You may notice that when you turn the horizontal knob, the number in the vertical box changes. So you may have to go back and forth between the two knobs before they are both zero. Now you are ready for engage. On the desktop, open the Nanoscope 9.1 software. The analysis software will open automatically. If you are using Scan Assist, the experiment group you should choose is Scan Assist in Air. This will launch the default for running in Scan Assist mode. When you are ready, load your experiment. On the left, there is a workflow toolbar. On this toolbar, click Setup and then enter the type of tip you are using. This will get saved with all the files that you capture. If you are watching this video, you are probably going to be using Scan Assist. So in the box, type Scan Assist. This box is the on-screen live camera image. Now you can start lowering the microscope so that the camera can focus on an image. You are going to want to double check that the illumination is still on and that the intensity is still halfway up. Lower the microscope until you get a live image of the probe. The microscope will almost be touching the adjustment screws before an image will appear. This is the probe. Now you can turn down the intensity if the sample is reflecting too much and continue to come down with the microscope until you focus on your sample. When the sample is in view and in focus, press down on the base until the probe comes into focus. You want to stop before it comes into complete focus because you do not want to hit your sample. It should be just enough to resolve both legs of the probe. Once the image is in focus, you can go ahead and check the parameters. Enter a starting value for your scan size and change the units if necessary. Make sure the X and Y offsets are at zero. Your scan angle should be zero as well. Scan Assist will adjust the scan rate and your gains for you so make sure the scan assist control is on. Decrease the samples per line in the initial engagement to expedite finding your area of interest. Once your scan size is set and a reasonable samples per line is chosen, press engage. You will see the motor moving down and decreasing the physical spacing between the probe and your sample. Once the atoms on the tip sense the atoms on the sample, it will engage the tip and begin scanning. Your tip should be stable, which is indicated by the Z-piezo placement. It should be in the green, which means the probe is steady and not having trouble duplicating the sample's surface. At this point, you can decide on your area of interest by resetting your offsets. If you want to shift left, right, up, or down, you can do that in these fields. Or you can zoom to an area by using the zoom box, adjusting the size of the box, and pressing execute. Now it has repositioned itself to where you placed the zoom box. You can also offset your image by clicking offset and then wherever you place your cursor will be centered as the area of interest after you press execute. To better resolve your image, you can increase the samples per line either with the left right arrow keys or by directly entering a value. This will determine how long it takes for you to capture your image. You can change the scan size at any point by choosing a value directly. Up at the top, select your capture directory by clicking on the icon with the folder. Choose your folder in the E drive or make a new folder if you would like. Give your file a name and then press enter. It will be truncated with a dot zero 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 
and allow you to continue capturing successive files by incrementing this number. Select the first camera to capture the next image. Down at the lower right, it should say Capture On. If you should change any of the parameters in the field to the left, it will wait for the next complete capture where no parameter changes have been made. It also allows you to see how much time it will take to capture the image under these conditions. You can display two channels in the Scan Assist mode. You can display them vertically or four up, but remember you can only display height and peak force error. It does not take any extra time to capture two different data types, so you can display them together or you can display them singly. When the capture is done, you can open it in the analysis software so that you can analyze your sample. The first thing you will probably need to do is flatten your image. Use a first order flatten to remove lines or a second or third order flatten to remove bow and or tilt in the image. By right clicking on the color bar, you can adjust the contrast. You can either move your cursor on the histogram or you can click real time and it will automatically put whole numbers in for your min and max. You can use the auto scale or customize it using your own values. You could also choose a color table. Most literature will either use table 12 or table 2. After you have flattened your image and chosen the color, you can look at it in either 2D or 3D. You can rotate it and tilt it to your preference or enter values in the fields displayed. You can change the Z scale with the arrow keys or by entering a value. Once you have an image that you would like to keep, you can export it by going to a blank area on the screen, right clicking, and choosing Export View. Make sure you go to your folder before you save it, and do not forget to give your file a name. It is a good idea to truncate it with what type of image it is, such as 2D or 3D. You can hover over all of the analysis icons to decide what you would like to do with your image. For instance, if you would like to review the roughness, simply click on the roughness icon and the roughness values will appear for the entire image. If you do not want to display all of these parameters, right click anywhere in the parameter field and select show all. You can uncheck them all and select only the ones you would like to display. Anything that says image in front of it is directly related to the entire image. You can also use your mouse to draw a box and then see the measurements related to that box. Right click again and unclick Show All so that it only displays the parameters that you want. Another tool that is helpful is the Section Analysis tool, the one with the knife on it. You can draw a line through features in either the vertical or horizontal direction and it gives you the profile of that line along with two cursors. You can place these cursors on any portion of the profile. You can add cursors by going to the left of the graph until it becomes a double arrow. Now you can measure the pitch along with the depth and the size of the hole. Everything associated with the cursors is shown at the bottom of the screen and is sorted by color. As you hover over each icon, 
select what analysis feature you are interested in. You can select Help to learn how to use it. If you are looking for a specific feature, you can use the search bar at the top of the page.